Okay. My name is Anita Childs, and it started because I was on my way to pick my daughter up from my ex-husband. Um, he and his girlfriend had recently moved to Jefferson, Maryland. I was not certain about the area, so I plugged it into my phone's navigational system. And for a while it was working okay, but at a certain point it stopped working. It would only work if I literally pushed on it and read the streets were coming up. So because I knew it was dangerous to do that, I just kind of sort of looked at several of the streets and tried to memorize it. And and I know, I know the last street that I, well, the last exit, rather, that I remembered was 32 West. I also remember something maybe about a 12B. So when I took 32 West, again, I'm not familiar with the area. I, you know, came to a point where I was trying to decide, you know, do I keep straight, do I go left, I'm not certain, but their vehicle's behind me. So in an attempt to get out of folks' way, I just decided I would go towards my left. And in doing so, I noticed, you know, like, okay, where am I? I'm approaching like this kind of secured area. So I'm thinking, okay, even though, um, and again, I don't know where I am. So I didn't even think, okay, if I have to, I can present my federal ID because I didn't know where I was. I just knew at some point I probably would be in contact with some type of um, security personnel. So I figured I don't need to do all of that. I'll just pull over to the side and try to um, re-put the information in my phone and see if it will start working again. So in doing so, I had sat there for a while. I had ended up having a conversation with my son who had called me, and he was like, Mom, you know, try to do the Google system. Maybe that will help you be able to, you know, get yourself on track. Sometimes that NAV system works better. So shortly after he and I hung up the phone, I noticed that a vehicle had pulled up behind me. So I figured, okay, it's probably some type of security for the premises that's going to ask me to, you know, probably leave the property, which was not a problem. So um, I then saw some flashing lights, so I'm thinking it's confirmed. This is some type of security personnel. So afterwards, a female approached my vehicle. A young female appeared to be a Caucasian um, cop and um, asked me why I was sitting there. So I went on to let her know, you know, hey, you know, I got um, lost. I decided to pull over to put an address in my nav system so I could get myself back on BW Parkway and figure out where I'm going so I can pick my daughter up. So afterwards, she said, well, you know, give me your license. And I was kind of, you know, looking at her body language and just her, kind of her tone then like, wow, I'm thinking this to myself. She wasn't polite at all, even from the onset. So I had asked her, I said, because, again, I'm thinking even if this is some type of uh, security personnel, they're going to ask me, to, you know, this is private property, what have you, you're going to have to leave the premises. I did not expect to be asked for my license. So um, I asked her in a calm manner, I just said, oh, okay, well, why do you need the license? And she immediately you know, responded with an attitude, um, you know, you're on federal property, I don't have to answer anything, just give me your license. And, you know, I looked at it and I again explained, well, ma'am, you know, I apologize. Are there any signs? If there are, it's dark, I didn't see any. I just figured I would pull over, get myself back on track. And she yelled and said, give me your license. And so, I asked her at that point, I said, okay, ma'am, I'm getting a license, but why are you yelling at me? And so then she proceeded to say, I'm going to ask you one more time, give me your license. Do you want to go to prison tonight? And I'm thinking, really, all of this because I'm sitting here pulled to the side? It's not like you pulled me over. You approached me because I was a vehicle sitting here. I understand that 
but I didn't understand why she had the um, attitude that she had towards me. And so, uh, of course, while all of this, the conversation is going on, I'm fumbling through my purse trying to find my little identification container so that I can get the license. And so I finally found it. And at that point, you know, she had said, never mind, don't worry about it, just get out of the vehicle. And, of course, she's yelling. And so I asked her, I said, well, ma'am, why do you want me to get out the vehicle? Like, what have I done to cause you to ask me to get out of the vehicle? And she was just yelling, get out of it. And I said, I'm not comfortable getting out of the vehicle. Again, I don't understand why I have to get out the vehicle. And I went through it again. Like, all I did is I pulled over to the side to try to figure out where I'm going. You know, like, I've not done anything for you to, you know, treat me this way. And why are you yelling? Why are you screaming? And so then... um she said, so at a certain point, I just figured, let me get out of the vehicle because I don't know what's going to happen. She's um, threatening to take me to jail and what have you, so let me just get out, even though I'm afraid to get out because I'm thinking if I get out, like, what is she going to do next? Is she going to pretend that maybe my body hit her in some type of way? But it, because to me, what was conveyed to me was more so like she wanted a reason to lock me up. So even though I was very fearful, I figured I need to go ahead and get out the vehicle. And so when I started to get out of the vehicle, she told me to never mind, get back in the vehicle. And of course, the whole conversation is a lot of yelling. And so... I put my left leg back into the vehicle, and I still had my license in which, you know, my window was rolled down. She snatched the license out of my hand. And so then she, my door was kind of cracked. It wasn't all the way open because I had fully gotten out of the vehicle. At that point, she opened the door all the way up, and then she slammed it real hard. And I asked her, I said, ma'am, why would you do that? Like, why would you slam my car door that hard? Why would you do that? And she rolled her eyes. She took and she went towards the back of my vehicle, which I'm assuming to her vehicle. But prior to that, I could tell she was kind of communicating with someone with her little lapel mouthpiece. And... um Shortly afterwards, probably less than a minute or so, there were a bunch of vehicles that had surrounded my vehicle. And, of course, at this point, I am petrified because I'm trying to figure out what's going on, like really what just happened. And so um, the other vehicles approached. They got out of the car. Um, and in particular, there was this other white young female um, who had, she was closest to the vehicle and this other guy, and they were saying, um, like, you know, calm down, and do you want to go to jail tonight, and we can pull you out of the car if we have to, and they were going on and on. And so in the process, I was dialing 911 because I'm thinking, you know, frankly, I don't know all of my rights, and even if I did know them, I probably would be scared to exercise them at this point because I, I don't, I'm so afraid of what they're going to do to me. And so I called 911, and I was explaining that, hey, I have a situation with a female officer. She's treating me badly. She's yelling. She snatched my license. She slammed my car door. Like, I don't know what to do. What are my rights right here? And the entire time that I was trying to have a conversation with the police officer on the line, they were yelling, hang up the phone, hang up the phone, hang up the phone. And I had said to them, I said, no, I've called 911. I said, because I need to know my rights. I don't know what's going on here, and I need to know my rights. So the guy on the phone was explaining, if you want to file a complaint of this, that, and the other, and they continued to yell, hang up the phone. And so eventually I did. I hung up the phone, and then one of the other – the the other female officer, I think it was only one other female officer, she had um, started talking to me. And she was, you know, she had kind of, um, you know, started explaining, like, what was going on, 
what their job was and um, telling me, you know, the facility that I had entered. And she also had, um, she also had, a, well, she had mentioned something to me because I'm thinking at this point my voice probably had escalated. And I told her, I said, well, you know, I wasn't yelling. I said, but the initial officer, when she came over, her behavior was terrible. I said, she was yelling. She snatched my license. She slammed my car door. Thank God my leg was not in the way because she probably would have broken it off. I said, and if my glasses pulled up, she probably would have shattered it. I said, I didn't understand at all you know, why I was treated terribly from her. And so at that point, the officer who initially came over to my car, she said to me, um, no, she yelled back and said, that's right, I, w I yelled at you or I yelled at her, one of those, something to that effect. And so the other female officer kind of went towards her and tapped her on the chest like in a gesture to say, okay, calm down. And so after that, she kind of, the initial officer stood back. And so there were two, um, the other female officer and another guy, and there were a few more of them, but they weren't right in my direct view. They kind of stood over to the side. So the other all female officers, she continued to talk to me. She apologized for her um, co-worker's behavior. And she did, you know, agree with me that, hey, you know, folks come on our facility, they get lost. She should have explained to you what was going on. She also should have told you why she was requesting your license and all of that. And um, so the, the other guy who was kind of standing there, he I don't know, he seemed like he was having a problem that I was looking more so towards his direction when I was talking. So he just basically told me, you you know, you can direct your, you know, conversation to her. And I didn't understand that. I told him, I said, well, all of you all are here. So I'm basically, you know, I'm talking to you all as a group. And so... Um, the other female officers stood over there with me. The rest of them were more so back towards where the initial officer were, was. And so the um, other one, she told me that, you know, they were checking my license, and then she came back and said my license checked out okay, that she would make sure that I got, you know, um, on the road and, and was able to get in the right direction. She knew where I was going, and she would put me in the right direction, and she said that um, I would be able to leave soon. So I then decided, okay, let me go ahead and call my ex-husband, let him know, hey, I know you're wondering where I'm at. And, you know, as soon as I called, I was told, hey, hang up the phone. You can't make any phone calls. And I asked her, I said, why, ma'am? Like, nothing's going on. I'm sitting here to the side. I'm waiting on you all. And she was like, until this ordeal is over, you can't make any phone calls. So I said, okay, let me hang up the phone. So I hung up the phone. I think I sat there approximately 10 to 20 more minutes, and the initial, the first female officer came back over to me. I noticed her demeanor had changed somewhat, so I don't know if the other officer had had a conversation with her and maybe told her to calm down, but I know she was different when she came back over to me. So she presented me with a paper and was saying, hey, ma'am, I need you to sign it, in which I told her, I said, I'm not going to sign anything. And so she said, well, it's fine. It's not any type of admission to anything, but if you don't want to sign it, you don't have to. And she said, I'll give you your copy, though. And then, and, you know, afterwards she handed me a citation for $317, and it read, you know, failure to – um, failure to, I think, um, something with the direction um, of an NSA police officer, follow the direction of an NSA police officer. And I'm just looking like, really, the only thing I did that night was pull over so that I would not be trying to use my phone in traffic while I was driving. I tried to do the safe thing. 
And all of this transpired, and in the end, after all that terrible treatment, she literally gave me a ticket. And I'm thinking, what type of direction? Like, you didn't pull me over. I was already parked. I was literally parked when you approached my vehicle. Everything that she asked, which wasn't a lot other than, you know, yelling, hey, get out, give me your license, and yelling, get out of the vehicle, I cooperated with. So I was thinking, like, what is she talking about? Why did I get the citation in the first place? And why was I treated the way I was? It was to me, it was no reason when she approached me. I was calm. I answered her. It wasn't like I had any drugs or any alcohol. It's not like it was anything about my behavior or anything in my vehicle that would warrant her um, you know, treating me as harshly and as unprofessional as she did. So basically she gave me the citation. The other female kind of stopped the traffic, and she had told me, you know, the way to get back on the parkway and the right way to go towards Tessa. And that was pretty much the night, you know, other than me driving home distraught and confused trying to figure out what had just transpired.